Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ty and this is Ty the Space. In this video, I'll be showing you how to expand the Apple HomeKit setup using Home Assistant. My channel is about smart tech and DIY projects. So if this sort of stuff interests you, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. In my previous video, I did set up Apple HomeKit at my parents' house where my mom, dad, brother, and sister all live. They all use Apple devices, so it kind of made sense to go with the Apple HomeKit setup. However, there were a couple of devices that I had previously installed in the house that do not support Apple HomeKit, like um, the Smart Life two-year devices. So I have smart switches, smart bulbs, smart outlets, or even smart blinds from this third party companies that do not support HomeKit. So it's kind of a pain to actually have a different app to control this. So I thought, why not just integrate it into HomeKit. Home Assistant is a very flexible, versatile, and powerful software for managing smart home devices. One of the easiest ways to run Home Assistant is using a Raspberry Pi. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I use a Raspberry Pi 3 to configure and set up Home Assistant. One of the greatest things about Home Assistant is its flexibility. You can install it on a variety of platforms like a Raspberry Pi, an Intel compute, an NUC, or even any old computer that you have laying around that is always powered on. You can even install it on a NAS as well if you have one, like one from Synology. I have personally opted to go with the Raspberry Pi 3 because I want to keep things separate. It is very small, portable, consumes very minimal power. So it just makes it perfect for installing Home Assistant in my parents' house. To do this, you need a Raspberry Pi, a power supply, and a micro USB card with a minimum of 32 gigs. Before you begin, make sure you have the latest version of the Raspberry Pi operating system installed on your micro SD card. You can download the operating system image from the Raspberry Pi website and use the Balina Etcher tool to write it to your micro SD card. Use the flash from URL option. You can find the URL on the Home Assistant website. The link is in my bio. Once you have your micro SD card with the operating system installed, insert it into your Raspberry Pi and connect the Ethernet cable and power supply. Give it about 15 minutes for the installation wizard to run. Then navigate to the IP address of your Home Assistant. You can find it on your router or using the network share on your computer. Run the initial installation steps, putting in the information relevant to your country and currency. I like to personally support developers, so I enable the option to send diagnostic statistics to them. You can choose to opt out of this option if you don't want. Once it is all done, Home Assistant will automatically scan your network for all smart devices that can be added. Before we get to the HomeKit add-on, we need to install the two-year integration. This will allow us to control devices such as lights, switches, power outlet, and ball that weren't talking with HomeKit. I'll assume you've already installed the Smart Life app and have your devices already in use. Next, we can head over to the developer's website for Tuya. Create an account by following the sign up option. The account is different from your Smart Life app, so your existing Smart Life credential will work here. Once that's done and you're in the developer's console, head over to the left pane and select Cloud and click Development. Create a new cloud project, type in the name of your choice. Select Smart Home for the industry and choose the data center that is closest to you. In my case, East and West American data centers are the closest to me. You will need this in a later step if you are not sure what data center your Smart Life app is on. In the authorized API services, include device status notification and authorize. Once that's done, close that tab and head over to the link to your app tab. Open the Smart Life app on your phone and scan the QR code to initiate the linking process. All of your Smart Life devices should then appear. If it doesn't, change the data center from the top drop down menu on the top right and repeat the linking process again. Now, head over to the authorization tab to grab all the information you will need for your Home Assistant integration. In Home Assistant, we're going to go ahead and do the two year integration. Click on settings on the right pane, select device and services and click add new integration search for two year over here enter the information from the authorization tab of the two year development console use your smart life credential for the account login then it should populate all of the devices listed in the developers console you can go ahead and assign them to a room since HomeKit is the primary interface organizing it here is not very necessary but i like to keep things organized so i organize it everywhere anyways go ahead and configure all the other devices 
and name them properly prior to beginning the process of HomeKit integration. So that way you can do a one-time import into HomeKit with the right name. You'll still be able to change the name at that point anyways if you don't feel like doing it right now. All right, let's configure HomeBridge for domains. Head over to the device and services again. If HomeKit is not listed in the options, click add integration and search for HomeKit. Apple will show up. Select that and then HomeKit and HomeKit controller will show up as well. HomeKit controller is for adding devices that support HomeKit natively in Home Assistant. You can also tie it into HomeKit from Home Assistant. But in my case, all my HomeKit devices have been tied directly to my Apple HomePod instead. So we won't need to use the HomeKit controller options. Select the HomeKit option and then it should give you options to select domains. Now, every devices belong to a domain. This is where you specify what domains you want to allow into HomeKit. In my case, I want to integrate switches, bulbs, and sensors. So I'm going to select the switch domain, the light domain, and the sensor domain. For cameras, locks, and TVs, don't include them in this bridge. They would have to be created as part of an individual bridge in accessory mode. We will cover that next. Head over to the notifications pane on the left, and you should see an HomeKit QR code. Go to the Home app on your phone, and scan this code. Then it will start prompting you to add all the devices in the domains you included in your brick. Add them one at a time. You can rename them at this time as well and add them to their rooms. You can also exclude devices or entities that you don't want showing up in home app. This might not be an issue in the early stages when you have just few devices, but as you start to add more and more devices, you might start to have some devices that you don't want to show up. All you have to do is go to the bridge on your home kit add-on, configure it, and then select the devices in the exclusion list. Now let's go ahead and configure devices such as cameras, locks, and TVs. We're gonna do the same process as before. Head over to the device and services, add a new integration and select HomeKit. In your domains, select media, locks, and cameras, and then confirm. This would immediately populate all of your media, locks, and remote entities. Before you go ahead and start pairing them up to your Apple Home app, select each of the entities and confirm that they are actually in accessories mode and not bridge mode. It has to be in accessories mode for it to work properly. Once you've verified all of that, repeat the same process by scanning the QR code with your Home app and adding them into your Home app. Turn off the study bulb one. Okay, the study bulb one is off. Set the basement light to 100%. Okay, I set the basement light to 100%. Turn off the basement light. Okay, the basement light is off. Turn on Samsung TV. Okay, the Samsung TV is off. Turn off Samsung TV. Okay, the Samsung TV is off. 